Hello folks, I'm Odin Smack, and welcome back to 33 years and counting of my favorite games. This is part 21, the year 2002. A lot less things to mention today. <laughs> I think 2002 just may have been a slower year for me in games. I did, I did cross off a few honorable mentions that I did have, but I don't think it was anything too crazy, honestly. So we're just going to get right into it here. Uh, starting with uh, Animal Crossing. Uh, for the Nintendo GameCube. I was going to give this one a, a quick honorable mention. It's not a game that I invested a ton of time into, uh, but it did, you know, obviously launch the series in North America, and because, you know, there was a Japanese N64 version, but regardless, it launched the series in North America, and I really like the original roots of the game. I like the look of it. It just... It just has a certain appeal that I just feel like the modern ones don't that I've played. They just they just feel different. Uh, I don't know. I'm not just saying that the modern ones are bad or anything like that, but there's just there's just a charm to the original one on GameCube that just sticks with me. It might be the music, uh, definitely a big part of it. Maybe the like smaller characters, uh, maybe that has something to do with it. I, I don't know. I just I I really like the the first one a lot. So it's just there you go. But I, I don't really have much more to say on it. Uh, my other honorable mention. This isn't an honorable mention. Like oh, this could have been a top three. By the way, this is an honorable mention for how ridiculous this game is in in a way that like it's not bad. And it also has roots for being one of my first Game Boy Advance games, along with. Mario Advance 2 Super Mario World, which originally I had on here as an honorable mention, but I decided to cross it off because, well, it's, it's just kind of, it's just Mario World. My other honorable mention is Shrek Hassle at the Castle on the Game Boy Advance because it's just a small retelling of the movie, but as a platformer, that's not half bad. Uh, is it anything amazing? No. Is it going to be one of my favorite games of all time? No. But it, it kind of has a little bit of nostalgia just for being that first Game Boy Advance game I had, along with Mario World. <laughs> and so really, it's the first new experience I got to experience on the Game Boy Advance, because I had I'd played Mario World before. So it, it, honestly, it, it wasn't bad. It's, it's, it, I would check it out if, if you see it. You know, if you like Shrek, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> so anyway, there's my honorable mentions. There you go. There's two of them. Uh, let's go to the top three, starting with my bronze medal, and that's going to go to Metroid Fusion on the Game Boy Advance, another Game Boy Advance game. Uh, Metroid Fusion is a is a more linear uh, Metroid game. I, to my knowledge, you you can break it a little bit, but I think for the most part, it is very straightforward until pretty much the end where you can start backtracking and getting a lot of the different power-ups. But Metroid Fusion just has such a cool, like, world to it, because it's not, it's not a planet, it's a, it's a space station that you're on for the entire game, and each of the, there, there's different environments on it, uh, that are, like, containing the, the X parasites which is, like, a pivotal, or pivotal? An important element of the game. <laughs> I also like that it takes place after Super Metroid, uh, so there's you know there's obviously things to expect from Super Metroid in the game, but I just kind of like how they changed Samus to like become like like at the very beginning of the game she she basically dies. I mean she doesn't quite, but like they have to, like, revive her with, like, the Metroid. So, like, she kind of becomes, like, one with, like, like her suit and that is, is part, like, Metroid and that. And it, it's really neat. And that plays into the whole X-Parasite and, and Samus correlation. I, I just think it's really cool uh, because, you know, the story from Super Metroid is there's not supposed to be any Metroids left. Uh, and she's alive by the the story of the third game. So it, it's it's really cool. I love the... There's not a ton of lore in Metroid. I think Metroid Fusion just does it really cool. By the way, if you think any of this is spoilers, this is the very beginning of the game. <laughs> like, literally the start before you can even control Samus. So, this is the very beginning of the game here I'm talking about. Um, 
And I, I just think it's very cool that, like, they actually implemented a neat story that focuses more on Samus than, like, the world the world or the galaxy that she's in, because I feel like they don't do that enough. Uh, so this is the first game where you really get that backstory. Other M tried to go for, like, some backstory on her, and it was just, like, not great. Fusion did it well. It, it, I think Fusion did it really well. Uh, with giving her some lore and kind of making her a character that you can start to understand a bit. So, you know, she has that still that mystique, that mysteriousness about her, but you get to learn a little bit more about her. And the gameplay is tight. <laughs> it plays really well. It's not very floaty with your jumps and that. Uh, the wall jumping feels not hard to do at all. Super Metroid, it's a little complicated, but... Wall jumping feels like an actual part of the game in this one. It it's cool. Play super play uh, super well play super Metroid I guess, but play Metroid Fusion. <laughs> okay, my silver medal is gonna go to Kingdom Hearts for the PlayStation Two. Uh, this was another one of those like weird games that like one of my friends was like like this is me in middle school. He's like yeah they made this game where there's Disney stuff and Final Fantasy stuff in the same game. And I'm like, that's not real. I don't believe you. And then eventually, for Christmas, uh, I would get a PS2 with <laughs> ATV Off-Road Fury 2, which I put, like, no time into. Like, came bundled with my PlayStation 2. But also, my, my family somehow got me Kingdom Hearts. I, I don't know how... Like, they decided that's the game we needed to play. Maybe it was new at the time when we got our PS2. I, I really can't remember the year that we got it. Um, I I don't think it is, because I think the one we own is Greatest Hits. So, I, well, Greatest Hits, it may have been cheaper. That's probably why. <laughs> that's probably why. Um, but, hey, they, they made a good choice. Uh, they didn't buy us a memory card at the time, because they were impossible to find. So... I played through the first bit of that game quite a few times before we finally we were able to save it when we eventually did get a memory card. But uh, there's my little backstory on Kingdom Hearts, just because I thought that'd be a little fun story to share with you. It is really cool. Uh, the music's great. Uh, I mentioned before in a previous video that I like Kingdom Hearts 2 a lot more than this one. Uh, but, I mean, I still like this one enough to make it my silver... Uh, for this year the gameplay like I said just it's just not quite as good but it, it's it's not bad uh, and the story I think is a lot more enjoyable in this game because it the Disney worlds feel involved in the story a little bit anyway I feel like later entries that I've, I mean I guess I've only played two entries but I feel like Chain of Memories and 2 they don't feel like as involved in like the main story whereas in kingdom hearts they they did they, they felt more involved so that's my opinion anyway so it's a fun game fun series lots of fan service you know you like disney you like final fantasy the game to play i mean you gotta check it out at least it's a fun little action rpg all right if we're already at gold medal uh, this is gonna be a short video maybe uh it's gonna go to metroid prime on the nintendo gamecube this was one of my earlier uh, titles that I got on the GameCube. This may have been the first one that I owned after Zelda Collector's Edition, which I mentioned last time uh, came included in my, like, with my GameCube. Uh, Metroid Prime is a fantastic game. <laughs> it is, it is just so well done. Um, I'm a big fan of the first-person shooter genre in general. I, I think uh, they're neat. I haven't played. Uh, I haven't played a lot of like just like multiplayer shooters. Like I played a few, but I I really like first-person shooters uh, when like the story is cool and it gets you involved. And Metroid Prime has that, because it's not like a traditional first-person shooter. I think that it's marketed as a first-person adventure. Uh, I mean, it definitely is an FPS, like it, at its core it is. Uh, but it it is very much still a Metroid game. You're still looking for power-ups and 
Um, there's still a there's still like a method to playing through it. Lots of backtracking and that. It, it's got all of the things, but it's just in the first person perspective. But man, when I first played this game, I I was like, wow, this game is beautiful. Uh, I didn't really notice it too much in the opening sequence uh, when you're on uh, it's another space station. I think it's a space station. It's something like that. Or it's like a ship or something like that. But when you land on Talon 4, the planet of the game, it is like so cool to just see the environments. Uh, GameCube water is just like awesome. I love that like the water like just like uh, hits your mask and you can like see that and you can see like Samus's reflection in that too. I think that's like uh, like I just think that's really cool how, how water effects look on the GameCube. Um, just that, like I said, just the first part of that planet is just like really neat, and then it, it only gets better from there. Uh, but I just remember those first moments, and then of course it's playing like a, a really slow rendition of the original Metroid Brinstar music in the background too, which is really cool. Um, just it, it's like it's got like that perfect bit of nostalgia right there. Not a, not a lot, but just a little bit. And then it's like, well, this is a new game still. Um, and this game is just it's it's challenging for sure. Um, I think uh, more so at the beginning, like a lot of Metroid games are, they are very uh, difficult at the beginning, uh, and they get a little easier as you get power ups. But I think it's pretty challenging, kind of all the way through, um, even in the later stages. Even though I, I okay, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but um, it's definitely something to get used to if you're used to more like 2D platforming Metroid, obviously. But uh, once once you have the handle on it, it 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 just it feels like you're just playing another Metroid game, like just like a a classic traditional one. So, and this game has some really nice atmospheric music too, uh, which I feel like they really dropped the ball in the most recent Metroid uh, entry. I feel like the music here, it's not anything that blows you away, but it just it brings you in. Some of the themes are just like magical. Fendrana drifts. It's just such a beautiful piece. I, it's like one of my favorite mu. Uh, music pieces in gaming probably so anyway that's that's my gold medal for uh, 2002 so hope you enjoyed the list for tonight or today I, I make these at night typically i have been now so hope you enjoyed if you uh, have any different differing opinions i would love to hear them especially for 2002 because i feel like i really couldn't find anything that i was like super in love with for this year i feel like my top three was pretty safe and I, I don't feel, like, bad for, like, I don't have anything, like, weird, I don't think, for me on the top three that's like, oh, I want to put this on here. I, my top three makes sense to me, but I would love to hear if you guys have anything else. So uh, I will see you next time for 2001. So until then, take care. I've been Owns back. Goodbye. <laughs>